103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Sunday, uh, today is Sunday, March 28, 2021, and I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I'm melting! Melting! <laughs> Uh, okay, a lot of rain out there, that's for sure. <laughs> Didn't know you were a witch, though. Yeah. Our guests today are Doubtfire and Boudreaux and George Brooklyn and Dreadfire at Higgs. Wall. A digital free thought radio hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville? You're nodding your head, Ty. Did you did you know that? I love it. It's I don't know if it's technically a musical, but I do like it. My favorite part is when the lion gets courage. And when uh, the Tin Man okay. gets a heart, right. because it's like the best <laughs> thing possible, because everyone needs a little bit of a heart and a little bit of courage. That's all you need. That uh, if I only had a brain. <laughs> yes. But so is that we a have musical? brains. We have brains on their show. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> have a nervous system. Yet. Years. He can dance. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll tell you more about how you can connect with the show right after the mid-show break. Also, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for a Digital Free Thought Radio Hour facebook page use the messaging function to send us questions or comments uh wombat what's our topic for today we're talking about sipping loudly in cups today it's going to be a really really great <laughs> hour-long discussion where we're just yeah. slowly slipping sipping into the microphone now everyone get it out welcome to the asmr <laughs> podcast atheist podcast we're talking about karma today uh, and before we get into the meat and potatoes of karma, I'm going to throw it up to our own Dread Power Higgs for our weekly invocation. Hello. Captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will not fear not sinking, for thou art with me. I must and I ready, mutter, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. Be gobbled when it's over. Only pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of my life. And I will shall dwell in the galley of our club forever. Ra. Hey, I want to do a quick review on how everyone's been over the last week. Dub, you keep, Dubshine, I, I, I got to remember, use your full name here. But Dubshine, you came up with a brand new album. I was listening to that this weekend. Uh, or over the last week, actually, a couple of times. You mind telling me about it? Because it was pretty cool. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, it's a remix album. So it's just taking a few of the tracks off my album, the uh, Collapse Reality, and um, it's just remixing it, you know, for the DJs. So I sent like about 400 plus DJs the remix so they can play it on their internet shows and radio sure. shows and stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah, it's like real vibey, real it is. extended out. Yeah, it's clean. That's what I get the vibe from. It's like it's very, very clean. If you remember, so this is my personal take. If you were, if you were ever in high school when I was in high school and Dance Dance Revolution ever came out, it was just mm. like clean track after clean track after clean track, just like this electronic, but not about crunch or synth just about clean precision beats and a, and a clear vibe from beginning to end and i really really liked it it, it reminded Ooh, me of my glad you like it man eric yeah it's good to see you how you been since last week i have been good i um gave my garage a complete overhaul Come okay that was needed <laughs> that was fun it's cathartic <laughs> okay uh, yeah <laughs> Are you so, getting uh, are you getting more into the uh, whole being outside, spring cleaning sort of thing now that COVID's over, or is that is that the uh, uh, cathartic part? Or well, well, yeah, I wouldn't say over, yeah. but like vaccinate post vaccination. No, I mean you know now you know month and a half after the second shot, and just feeling a lot more open and willing to do things, especially outside, <clears throat> playing some volleyball outside. Nice. And, yeah, um, eating eating restaurants. Uh, just, just opening up slowly more, but still, still cautious, you know, still caring about the people that aren't vaccinated or, right. um, you know, or can't get it for whatever reason. So. Yeah. I would say this, uh, I'm a little wary about going to a restaurant myself still, but I am planning on doing a picnic with some friends. I think that'll be kind of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially with the weather out like this, not so rainy, but when it is out and about, it's really nice. George Brown. How have you been since last week? The last week in my mind is a blur. I can't remember <laughs> anything except you wild and crazy. That's the problem. I yeah, uh, here here halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga, out in the boonies, mm. um, I've noticed. I, I went for a walk in the city park, and the health department was vaccinating a lot of people. Nice. Like the the number of people being vaccinated has exploded. Good, that's a good thing. And um, and the the age range is lower, of course. And I got my shot, my second shot, three weeks ago, nice. and uh, I did have a reaction to it. I won't get into the specifics right now. I would but, even say um, that's a good thing too. It's good to have a reaction to vaccines. That's showing that it's working. Your body recognizes the problem and is going through the mm. steps to fix it without actually even having the disease. That's a good sign. Yep. And I'm seeing, um, you know, if I, I go into the store, it's the same pattern. The, the old people are wearing masks and the younger people are, a lot of them are not, you know, mm. And I don't know how to interpret that exactly. I don't so, know either. Though I do think yeah. it's interesting that you're pointing a finger and calling people old. Because every single time you point, you got four fingers pointing back at you. Just letting you know. Did I, did I you, point? I, I heard you talk smack about old people before every single time on this show. It's just like all these old people in the grocery <laughs> stores, they're coughing in my face. I can't wait to tell them. I can't wait to tell them. I got. <laughs> it's the the younger time. people are coughing. Uh, in my now it's the younger I wanna, people. I want to do the coughing. Okay. It's my turn. Dread <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pirate, uh, how have you been since last week? Just checking in on well, you. Well, you know, I. Uh, I'm not going to be vaccinated. It looks like until the summer. So um, come, to, um, come to the U S please. <laughs> I am glad you guys are all getting vaccinated, but yeah, no, it's uh, my mom. She's uh, 75. Yeah. Uh, she only just got her first shot um, uh, a couple of days ago in preparation for surgery. So mm. um, yeah, but uh, other than that, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, uh, getting lots of work down on the coast there. Um, and uh I, I just uh, had contact with um, the administrator for the local college here. If you recall, I was uh, setting up a, a critical thinking course. Right. And uh, unfortunately, I had only received one, well, they had really mislabeled it. Um, so I had only had one, one person sign up. But uh, she asked me if I was now interested in doing um, maybe a teaser course. Um, and so I thought of a couple of things, uh, one of which is uh, doing a dowsing uh, demonstration like, uh, Rich, like Richard Dawkins did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there are a lot of local people here who um, do dowsing and believe in dowsing. And um, it, I think it would be a great opportunity to get some people out and uh, do this double blind uh, 
uh, the demonstration of uh, the efficacy of dowsing. Yeah, so if that's you want, I'm looking forward to. you can even put some vaccines in the ground and have a <laughs> dowsing rod <laughs> trigger to them and be like, you should, or just a piece of paper that says, get vaccinated. You bury that and you say, hey, the dowsing rod's pointing here. There's a magnet at the tip of the rod, a magnet right. underneath the paper. You can make this work, Dread Pirate. We can make it work for you. Yeah, awesome. Dread Pirate, where's your mom located? My, my what? Your mother. Oh, she's uh, she's about five hours away. So she's out in uh, Maple Ridge, which is just a little closer to the coast. Cool. Larry, how you yes. been since last week? Oh, doing fine. Just staying in, staying safe. Uh, got my second shot a couple weeks ago. Did have reaction to it. Had a full day of flu-like symptoms. Hmm. Um, Waiting for the weather to warm up so I can get my motorcycle back out again nice. and start riding. Nice. Uh, nice. It won't be long now. Uh, dogwoods are going to bloom here in a week or two, and that would be real nice. Are you getting the same rain that we're getting? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of rain last night, and it, it's taking a break right now, but I think it's coming back. It's oh, yeah, just, definitely. It sucks when it happens on the weekend, too. Like. Yeah. Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're like, oh my gosh, this weather's so great. Let's plan a picnic. Let's have fun. Let's go skating. This is going to be amazing. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, torrential rains, thunderstorm. Right. You're like, what are you doing? Is this, is this the cosmos punishing me for bad things I've done in the past? Maybe. Yeah. Could you be interested? I mean, in, 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 what is it? Injecting the topic at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking uh, we're going to talk about karma today, but it'd also be nice to talk about what we mean when we say karma, because there's a lot of different understandings of it. And I find mm -hmm. that to be one of the points that needles me when people mention karma as a thing but I don't want to bias the conversation. I would like to understand what people mean when they say karma. So uh, round table, Scott, if you have an impression of karma, why don't you give me a definition of it? And before you do, George Brown, think of a definition of karma. So that when it gets to you, you're like, hey, I got something, I got something. So Scott, what do you got? What's your definition of karma? Yeah, so I'll be, I'll try to be as quick as I can, mm. but um, I want to kind of, um, let the audience know that there's different, of course, we're already talking about different definitions of karma. And so there's a more traditional where it originated from. So there's two kinds, there's Sanchita karma and Prarab Prarabdha karma. And I learned this from listening to a guy named Saad Guru. I don't know if anyone's familiar with this guy, but he's like a yogi. He's, um, and he talks about how the West has kind of bastardized um, the definition of karma to mean some sort of supernatural type of thing, which is different from the yogic or Hindu traditions of karma. So his whole thing is that karma is simply about information. This is information that's kind of similar in terms to what we call software. So there's a certain amount of life um, energy that is charged with a certain amount of information. And um, this sort of becomes, this causes a certain kind of character that you are because of this type of information that's gone into you. From So from the moment you're born till this very moment that you're living now, the kind of family, home, friends, the things you did or did not do, all these things are influencing you. Every thought, emotion, action, comes only from past impressions that happen within you. But then there's different types of karma. There's Sanchita karma, which is a warehouse of karma, which goes right back to a single cell animal and even inanimate substances from where life evolved from. So all information is there within you. So um, it's kind of like um, a warehouse of information going back into you know different life forms and creation or whatever you want to call it so this is um this is your sanchita karma but you cannot take your warehouse and do retail business with it you know you you need to have a shop to do retail and that retail shop which is for this life is called parabda karma and so that's about a certain amount of information allotted for this life so depending on the vibrancy of your life it allows how much information it can take on. So the creation is very um, compassionate, for example. If it gives you a whole lot of karma that you have, um, you know, 
you would be dead. Right now, many people are tortured by simple memories from like 30 to 40 years ago mm -hmm. that they've kind of accumulated through their life. It's kind of like if you were given like a hundred times that memory, you would not survive it. So nature allots paravda or an allotted memory that you could handle. I'll just build that. Yeah. Could you condense That's that? Just, what, do you, what does it mean specifically just to you then? Like, I don't doubt that there's many different definitions of it that we can find on the Internet. But when I say karma, what does it speak to you in like a... In a, in a oh, like, yeah. Like... I guess if I, you know, because I try to be a rational kind of person. So if I was to take that on seriously, I would just say it's just what you were. Um, uh, it's kind of like the cause and effect of your life. Like different causes cause you to be a certain way. And it just like after I die, mm -hmm. if I treated people like crap, then that karma continues even after, you know, it affects people. And it's kind of like a drop in the ocean that... You're making ripples. And yeah, you're more making ripples, ripples under the surface, even it. if you can't yeah. see them, right? Is that that's what you're right. Saying? So that's what karma is to me. It's just cause and effect that extends beyond my mortal to uh, coil. It sounds like almost if this, you're saying it's just the environment, more or less, right. that you're in. Okay. And that's what Sadhguru says. It's just your life and how you affect the environment and vice versa. That's all um, it really means. I'm going to take that. I'm willing to go the next couple of extra steps. I think I've he I've heard the case, and we'll go to Eric next. But like uh, the idea of karma being an actual force that corrects injustices, that says, "Hey, if you are being out of your way mean to people, we're going to me as this corporation or agent or force, I'm going to find a way to to get mean." back at you because i need to balance out all the good and the bad in the universe eric have you heard anything like that yeah like, no that's your take that's a little more of the traditional or the, the more familiar take that i was uh i was thinking i thought the show would be based on it but i guess to me there there are two two types that are commonly talked about one is yeah if you're a really bad person and you die you mm -hmm. come back as you know you know, something worse because you're, because you, you know, you led a bad life. Um, but I think the one that really strikes true in, in kind of conversation is what, what I like to call what people call instant karma. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait till you die to get the payout good or bad. Uh, it, it, you know, it happens the next day, the weather turns or the, or you stub your toe or, you know, so if you do bad things, yeah, this, there's this force correcting the world to get you to do better things, which I, I would love for this thing to actually exist because you would love for this to exist. We should talk about that in the second half of the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have if, some if, objections to that. If this force actually existed and it had been running for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, I bet everyone would be a really good person. Well, based on what standard, that's what I'd like well, to know. And well, instead of punishing sure, me, sure. just tell me the standard to be good and I can follow that. Don't just keep punishing me blindly while I trial and error figure this out. Just have the list. If you are forced just to communicate to me, this is a bad thing, this is a good thing, do these things and you'll be okay. I'll be like, okay, fine, now I know. I, it's, it seems like you're personifying it though. I, I think if it worked just like evolution uh -huh. where it, it's not it doesn't have a goal in mind an agenda it's just oh this didn't work let me course correct course correct course and if you just keep course correcting it doesn't really matter what the what the goal is it's just you know you pe people would be better i would think okay um, okay i'm, I'm gonna keep needling eric for just a little bit but i want to talk more about this in the second half of the show eric evolution is one of the worst <laughs> judges or or heartless things in the universe there's just so many branches of unsuccessful living organisms that just die just because they're a little too blue or they're a little too tall or a little too heavy or they sure. didn't make enough feathers evolution doesn't care about people evolution doesn't care about you know humanity i want a system that if it is going to guide towards people being nicer to have an interest in 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 you know humanity or empathy or or respect or you know like anti-racism these would all be great things i, w I wouldn't want to force as blind as evolution to control that are you saying karma has no agency in this whatsoever it's just nothing but counterweights moving up and down on ropes i, I guess what i'm saying is if it worked like evolution then I, 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 I guess I disagree. I, th I think evolution got us here. So it, it, you know, it's maybe not the most efficient thing in the world, but you know, <laughs> the fact that we are here, we evolved um, the, the things that worked were successful. So if that same thing was true for, again, you have to factor time in here. I mean, if, if karma worked over billions and billions of years, I, 
I, I guarantee there would be, but, but again, if we can't, no, that's we can't, so fascinating. This is great. This is great. We, we can't give agency to it because then we're, now we're talking about something spooky and magical, like having it anti-racist <laughs> that like, who, who would pick all this, right? Who's going to be the judge of all of it? Who, where's the standard? Right, right, right. I love this. We got to come back to it for sure, but I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to weigh in. Dread Pirate, uh, would you mind talking to me about karma? What do you think it is? What does it speak to you? Well, the most common form I hear is essentially a balance sheet uh, in the universe. Um, and I think, unfortunately, what, what happens is uh, people conflate luck and karma. Uh, so, uh, you know, karma is just essentially luck with agency in it. You know what I mean? Um, so, so I, I certainly don't hold that uh, karma exists because, again, it's in in my definition anyway that um, that there's someone keeping an eye on this balance sheet and making sure that uh, over time uh, justice is meted out. Um, to the people that deserve it or don't. Now, when you say that, do you uh, phrasing it in the form of luck? Are you saying luck is also happening naturally, or is this force also introducing luck into people's lives? Or, or uh, well, the force well, I just think luck is luck. I mean, you know, it's uh, coincidences happen. I mean, uh, there are people out there that uh, uh, win, I'll phrase it like lotteries, this. Uh, win lotteries. Uh, so karma's not responsible for luck. Karma just punishes the bad to make sure it balances out with luck that naturally occurs. Well, I, I hear people speak of, you know, I, I did something wrong and, and I'm going to have to build up my karmic bank account, essentially. <laughs> and so it's, it's like a, it's like, that's a savings account that, you know, doing good deeds, you know, um, predisposes the universe to treat you in a better way. And, ah. and, I, and I think it's this sense of agency um, that people attribute to karma or their actions that, uh, they think, um, you know, it's it's like going to the credit union, you know, putting your card in the ATM to get some good karma. You know? Dread, you're almost phrasing it like it's a mafia that's coming room to room and yeah, being like, hey, yeah, there you go. Uh, it would be a terrible <laughs> thing if something happened to your, you know, your car today. Why don't you, why you pay me some good deeds? Because otherwise, we're going to come and pay you a visit, you know? That's right. And you'll find a horse head in your bed. Okay, well, that's very scary. We're gonna go, Larry. You're gonna get the final word, but we're gonna go to our you old talk to George me. Brown. George Brown, what do you think about uh, karma? What does it speak to you? Well, first of all, I don't believe in it. Let the, my my view on karma is very simplistic. I don't believe in it, but as I as I understand it, it's very. Um, childish almost it's um it's the reincarnation version i guess um that um you know if i step on a snail i'm going to come back as a snail mm. <laughs> and so with that in mind i'm wondering uh how's dick cheney going to come back <laughs> <laughs> you know donald trump hitler i mean this is going to be interesting but i don't believe in it so yeah it's all academic I mean, to me. I mean, just, what the hell? The funny thing is, I think it's. I think Trump's already one of the lowest forms. <laughs> I think someone did that, something that terrible and came back as Trump. <laughs> Larry, I don't know. Larry, can I get a can I get a point of view on karma for you? You get the final. Yeah, word. Uh, I get the final word. As you it get the final be. word on our, our definition. <laughs> what, is it? what is it? Yeah. No. Uh, any supernatural definition of karma, I think, is false. Of course, I don't believe in any supernatural um, entities at all. And I believe what George was saying about uh, agency out there in the universe is, uh, you know, with him, I'm, I'm in agreement. It's false. There's nobody out there with a tally sheet uh, keeping track of their good deeds and bad deeds, and there is no punishment after life. We have to take care of the justice that is meted out ourselves among ourselves to make sure that it's real it happens however i think like we we can live in our own social bubble uh you know like on facebook we create an environment around ourselves with people that agree with us people that like us people that we work together with and it's the same in real life 
uh, you can treat your neighbors good or you can treat them badly. Um, you can uh, make friends or create enemies during your life. And that creates the bubble around you that you live in. And that's a form of karma that pays you back during this life. Sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it's not. But uh, I think that's the only form of real karma that, that exists. But, of course, it does exist. If you feel like you're surrounded by jerks, it may be because you're being a jerk to everybody, that kind of thing. But I, that's about I, it. I do feel the what you put out in terms of vibes. Right. So I'm not a, I am not a believer in karma, but I am a believer in vibes. And what I mean by vibes is the attitude that I put out and display tends to be the one that's reciprocated back to me. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason why I'm having a good time with all of you guys right now is because I'm putting out, Hey, I want to have a good time with you. I'll show you guys respect. I'll have a good time. I can guarantee you if I was a jerk or I was more mean, I wouldn't have as many good friends on this call as I do right now. So like what I'm putting out is what I tend to get put in, but I wouldn't call that karma. I just call that input output io like we already mm -hmm. have like terms like the, for that for stuff like that tech <laughs> the computer tech guy scott gives me a thumbs up yeah, I, yeah I, that, that, that's a great um analogy actually and that's exactly like when i, I was telling you i was watching Sadhguru on uh youtube and he said that's the real definition of karma like traditionally from mm. its conception that's really what it means from that tradition this whole supernatural sort of um, definition number one side guru says it doesn't even make sense and it's not even true number two and it's not even what is taught and it's just a western idea mm. maybe it's kind of like a mix between christianity and some sort of yogi tradition or whatever he says that maybe brought that kind of idea but it's very popular in the west sure. oh yeah definitely this supernatural it, thing so i think that comes from the same idea of, hey, I don't like the Christian idea of God. I don't like what's being sold here, but I still need to fill the God hole, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And mm -hmm. what fills that God hole? Well, here's this idea that like, hey, if I'm good to people, I'll be treated good. That's sort of like a, more, a loose moral system I can put. And it mm -hmm. fits perfectly in here. Oh my gosh, it fits perfectly in my God hole. Mm -hmm. And if I die, I can come back. Oh, that's perfect. We're just gonna put some cement mm -hmm. on here and now smooth it out. And boom, I got a new... Not a religion, but it is a religion and it's spiritual. It comes from the East. <laughs> it's valid. George Brown, what do you think? Well, uh, are we into the discussion now? We are, we are about four minutes away from taking a break, and then we'll we'll. we'll okay, I want to I want to. Well, considering that I'm I'm here in the land of the evangelicals, sure. Um, I had a little discussion with another neighbor than the one I usually talk about, his brother. Um, who laid he, he laid a trip on me who tried to that um, if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ I'm going to go to heaven mm. so that to me sounds like there's no karma involved where this guy's there's coming no from no morality either <laughs> no, no uh, sounds like heaven's going to be a really dangerous place to be sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, always I don't want to go there <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I got to be honest with you. If and and we'll go back into what does the world look like with actual karma. I don't want to rally too much, but maybe a future discussion would be like, do you actually want to go to heaven? Because I feel like our idea of what heaven is is not actually where we would want to be, and I feel like there's some disconnect there. But hey, we're coming down towards the half of the show. Larry, you want to take us out and come right back? Sure. So this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Uh, well, about, what were we talking about today? Karma? We're talking we about karma, about? but we're going to quickly do some fan mail. What a fan, what a fan, okay. what a fan, what a fan, what a fan. What a good fan. What a mighty good, good fan. fan. Dad, I feel fact. bad for you. Let's try it one more time. It's, <laughs> what a fan, what a fan, what a fan, what a mighty good fan. What a mighty, 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 mighty. Nice, 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 nice. You guys can get excited about it now. It's spring. <laughs> We're out of the winter. Let's get happy. So Patrick okay. Madden says, have you guys ever considered moving this show to a podcast format? Y'all have a great format. 
Thank you, Patrick. We do have a podcast. It's on Spotify, iTunes, whatever have you, whatever your, your podcasting search is. Search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. That's the name of this radio broadcast as well as the name of the podcast. And I just take our live videos and put it up on my YouTube channel. Uh, Dada's Trading Room said, you guys were talking about Gusentight, or I'm sorry, you guys were saying about, bless you, how about Gusentight? In fact, in Noland, in, Port, in Poland, we say, oh my gosh, na zwarde. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just saying to health, which is often used on other occasions like a toast or before a vodka shot. And then there were a lot of other comments too, including from what we call life, who says, why say anything after someone sneezes? You don't say something when someone else farts or burps, do you? I think that's a good question. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to get back into the karma discussion. Eric, I have some uh, hot topics for you. Every, hot topics for everyone else too, but we'll start with Eric. The idea of, do you want to live in a world where karma actually does exist? <laughs> and if it was a system, not so much like evolution, but more like osmosis, where there's just Hey, you, there's, I'm evening out particles so that there's uh, <laughs> reverse osmosis where there's like this distribution, fair distribution of particles across a, a certain, the, the realm of supernatural and reality, whatever you want to call it. I, there's a force at play that's making things balanced. It's like an entropy. It's like almost like an entropic force and it's measurable and we can learn from it. And it's if over a billion years would guide us towards w what you believe is a better society is, is would you say like, is that a world that you would want to live in compared to the one that we have now? What are the benefits? What are the disadvantages? I'd love to know. Boudreaux, what do you think? I, I, I think we have to preface this. If we're going to talk about this, we have to admit we are talking about magic. Like I wasn't talking about anything <laughs> real. Okay. Like, okay. I, yeah. I can't imagine a system that is the, based on physics that we know it as we know it, that would be beneficial. But if we were talking about a, a little bit of sprinkle, a little bit of magic in a here, a little bit of magic. Yeah. 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 we got spice. And, and if, and if uh, the only kind of rule that this thing operated on was just um, improving happiness, you know, uh, then it, it, or just adding, adding more um, less suffering. If, if it was okay. if less, less suffering, suffering. Like, That's that was like the, the, the thing it operated on. Yes. I, I think, that over billions of years, we would be in a much happier world, I would think. Okay, so so system plus magic plus overall less suffering would make us happier. In what way would it be better than the system we have now? Like how, how would that manifest in a way that actually would be better? Like, Well, I think you'd be able to control things because we can really, like you talked about earlier, we can really only control things that we, we see, mm. you know, like we saw someone do something bad. We mm. put them in jail. Mm. Um, we can't control, you know, bad thoughts. We can't control things we don't see. So if you had this governing force, right, this, uh, karmic force that was course correcting there, it, I, honestly, hypothetically, it could be a really interesting world you'd be living in. I don't know that we would even exist in the way we are right now. It would be I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't agree that we would. I think if there was something governing our thoughts over millennia, like who we are today, would just be a product of this, you know, force that's guiding our thoughts and like and telling us what to think and when to think it, mm -hmm. and and curbing us away from maybe interests that don't interest the system itself. Uh. Something to think about. I want you, I want to get your thoughts, Scott. What do you think? Yeah, I was just gonna say it seems like it would just end up in the same position we are now because we're in a causal chain and karma kind of implies causation. And then you know it it kind of goes into this whole free will thing. It's like we're oh, sort of assuming free Eric, will. I thought. Yeah, it's like we're assuming that we have this will, and you know, and if that's the case. Hmm. Well, some people don't want well-being. Some people want to do other people damage. And so we're kind of just doing the same thing anyways, right? We're kind of like uh, ending up in a mixed bag of good, bad, evil, you know, virtue, because there's so many different people with so many different wills. And then we got to, and then even with determinism, the same thing exists. We still have people that want to do bad things and good things and all that stuff is determined beforehand because mm. we're in this causal chain of priors. So 
I don't know if it really gets you anywhere. I'm not sure. Boudreau, I'll throw one thing back to you. We'll get Dread Pirate to weigh on this too. But here's my monkey's paw situation where if we rely on a system that says less suffering, an island with 100 people will have less suffering than an island with 1,000 people. So this system, all it has to do is get rid of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> and it solves the problem. And I feel well, like the, the idea of like a system that isn't human determining what humans should do is problematic because a system that needs to be humane necessarily needs to be in service of humanity or at least have the perspective of humanity to understand what it's governing, right? Which is why I like governors who are humans and not dogs or robots, right? right? But, right? but again, <laughs> you're personifying the conversation. I guess I'm talking about a system that exists before humans. Yeah, I and, don't want that. I want humans well, to be the system. I want humans well, to determine what I, humans should do. Sure, but we're, I mean, we're having fun with the conversation. So I was just- <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm just poking, I'm just poking, you know me. If, if we had a universe that had this, this kind of golden rule, so to speak, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was ingrained in everybody, I, I would be really curious to, to kind of visit that world and just see, <laughs> I, I bet it would be a pretty happy place. I would just think it. Well, last, last question. Would you visit in the Star Trek format or Star Wars format? <laughs> well, Star Wars was a long time ago and Star Trek is in the future. So I'd have to go into the future. Cause then I'd have, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's more, there's more rules of what you're supposed to mess around with or not. Yeah. <laughs> George, what do you think? Um, well, you started out, I think you, you said the uh, not, com um, the, the, way, uh, the way it is now, right? I think something like that. Okay. And I was thinking, well, that means not karma. What's the definition of not karma? And then my my head started to explode. So <laughs> I would say the system what, that... What's the definition? Yeah, that's right. The system, I would say the system that we currently have is a non-karmic world. So what's the definition of not karma? Look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. Yeah, the that's karma. That's, raining, not, that's a non-karma <laughs> world that you're looking at. You, you it's raining. A, that bubble we were talking about, so yeah. we, there is some kind of karma. I mean, yeah. you can't totally throw it out because people are going to react the way they are treated. Mm -hmm. and, you know, So you're going to have that kind of thing with you no matter what. So that at least exists. Dred, I got a question for you. Uh, would you want karma to be a real thing, regardless of whether or not you believe in it right now? What do you think we would benefit from if karma was, in fact, the thing that actually existed? Um, I wouldn't want to live in a karmic world. Um, the Or even the idea that only humans are subject to karma. I mean, if karma is a real thing in the universe, then it should affect animals. It should affect bacteria. It should affect everything that that um that lives and moves and slithers i mean uh, is a is a lion subject to a, a karmic uh lashback uh, for killing a killing a, a new or something you know what i mean um i don't know it's just it, again it's it's all this idea that the humans have souls uh yeah. and animals don't i mean it's all tied to this sort of magical and uh, primary uh, place in the universe that that humans uh, would put, put themselves in if things like karma exist or souls exist or hells exist or heavens exist. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know, it's, it seems like a silly notion to me and I wouldn't want to live in it. Is there any benefit that you could see if we did live in a karmic world? What would it be something that you'd be like, well, oh, at least we got this? Well, I mean, if karma existed, we wouldn't need uh, we wouldn't need laws and penitentiaries and punishments and all the rest because the universe is taking care of all that for us. The universe becomes our prison cell. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and if karma exists, it's like and laws exist, it's like double jeopardy. Yeah. You go to jail oh, for murdering yeah. someone, and then you get karma on top of that. It's like. You know, eternal punishment for a finite crime. Well, what would also suck is if someone got punished and you don't think the punishment was justified or met the the degree of crime, and you're like, "Can we make an extra law to punish them more?" Right. It's like, no, there you go. We already got karma to take care of it. The universe knows what needs to be in balance. That's right, Larry. I'd like to get your your throat before we go to Scott. Uh, Larry, what do you think about uh, a karmic world? Do you want to live in a world like that? And do you see any benefit that can come from it? Well, I assume you're talking about like where the um, the universe itself takes takes yes. note of every single thing you do, yep. and then uh, punishes you for the bad things and rewards you for the good. 
Um, the universe handles justice. I don't think so, but I could understand why some people would. Um, I mean, you think about you know being rewarded for good things and punished for bad. I think it would be okay, except uh, are you also going to be punished for mistakes, uh, things that you inadvertently hurt people f with or do uh, um, without malice, you know, That's that, a that, great that type of thing. Point. So if that was the case, if, if they took all of that into consideration, I don't think it would be a problem. That would make people act better, especially if they knew it was going on. But if it's just random and, and nobody knew, why am I getting kicked when I kicked that guy? Yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. point. If I gave someone a chocolate cake because I thought they liked chocolate cake, but they actually yeah. turn out to be allergic and they die from it, yeah. am I, should I expect repercussions from that? Or does the intention make it good? Mm -hmm. And if intentions can make potentially objectively bad things good things, what do you say about someone that's in a mentally impaired state? or right. someone that might be drunk at the time, or someone who is genuinely in love with someone that's way too young for them, and they try to maintain a relationship. <laughs> like, you can't do that. Karma's or masochists like who enjoy pain and then try to give that joy to others. That's not so much thing. great. <laughs> Scott, I'd love to get your opinion. Uh, did I ask you the original question? And give me all your thoughts. What do you think? Well, I was going to say, I, I heard somebody talk about um, this reincarnation, this karmic reincarnation thing uh, a little while ago. Yeah. And they were saying that the belief system in that is that if someone does bad things in this life and they go to jail or they get punished for it in this life, um, that they're, that now they're better people. So that in the next life, they kind of graduated to the next level. Oh. So they kind of look at this life as a schoolyard. Like, yeah, like what if they don't get punished in this life? Yeah. And if they don't get punished in this life and they didn't learn anything, then they have to start over. It's kind of like they didn't graduate to the next level. So it's always life is a, is going through to the next level, to the next level. It's like an evolutionary a, process. Isn't that a tenet of Buddhism? Sort of like, yeah, Buddhism. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what one of the mystical Buddhist Teaching. interpretations will say. Yeah. That, yeah, it's like a school. You go to school, and if you didn't learn anything from this life, you got to start over in the next one. But if you get punished and you kind of get rehabilitated and you've kind of got wisdom in your during your lifespan, yeah. then in the next life, you've gotten better. And they said overall the plan is, to, is that life for <laughs> humans gets better. I like the hopeful aspect of it because there's not a lot of hope in a non-karmic world. But I feel like karmic world has like, hey, Things can get better. Things aren't as bad as they seem. And sometimes you really do need to have, you know, at least that as a voice. I've known I've had some dark times too. So I do appreciate that from the current worldview. Eric, it looked like you had a question. Yeah. Yeah. I guess maybe just for the record, since you kind of got my silly answer to the question. I want, okay. The, give, all right, give me your grounded one. Give me your grounded one. I, yeah. My real, my real answer is pretty short so we can get, get back to everyone. That was a great disclaimer. You said magic. We were like, okay, right. we're talking about magic. There's, yeah, all right. We're good. So taking magic uh, aside, I really, the one thing we kind of teased on a little bit here that we haven't really uh, brought to light is it, it, understanding most of our thoughts on free will and the fact that we don't have free will. I told you, oh, you Eric. I told you you got him. <laughs> I told you you got him. Anyway, he wouldn't let it go. It's fine. I knew we were going to come. The, All right. The whole thing is preposterous then. If you don't have free will, then why are you getting punished for anything? You didn't even do it. So I'm, I'm <laughs> with George on it. Karma is just ridiculous. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't. Eric, Eric, I'd like to get your feedback on this because this is actually my point of view on a karmic world. Uh, it's more grounded. It's more in the sense of I don't actually think karma is actually real, but I do believe really that people actually believe in karma. And the problem with that is if they believe I get punished for my bad actions and rewarded for my good actions and they do something bad and they don't get punished for it, it's very easy for them to interpret that they did a good thing. And okay. that can start a really bad spiral where they continue to do bad things because they're out of a realm where they can get punished for it or, they're up, or not observed. Their, their crimes aren't observable. And they, those, punish, those bad things get worse and worse and worse. And I think to, I can only think of cases where someone actually got caught. But for every Harvey Weinstein that didn't get caught, or for, you know, every corrupt politician that didn't get, you know, an expose on, or for every robber that got away from it. These are people who are going to think of the worst thing that can, you can do or more harm they can do because they don't have that feedback because they believe in a system that 
watches them all the time is always this invisible force that helps whether it's an agent or not corrects them and if they aren't getting that response or feedback they think they're doing a good thing and i feel like that's the same problem that you know religious people fall into <laughs> and when you look at i'll throw the pope under the bus but <laughs> we don't have to keep, we don't have to keep banging on christianity there's definitely religions where it's like hey you know we're in the, we've been a religion for the last couple thousand years we've never had a woman as a leader we don't have to have a woman as a leader because we are clearly blessed by you know our god who gives us all these advantages so women can just continue to be substandard to men it's like if you're not trying to improve your culture if you're not making that effort it's going to die hopefully you know and if not it's not going to be you know representative of the best of what you could be and that in its own right is a bad thing but not a cosmically punishment. It's just a bad thing we all have to deal with. Uh, yo, I'm going to throw something out. I'm going to throw something out. <laughs> this is going to be a little random. Uh, I, I, if, if George is bored with the idea of karma, because <laughs> we've had talking, <laughs> what do you think of the idea from what we call life? He says, why do you say anything after someone sneezes? Why don't you don't say anything when someone else farts or burps, do you? George, I want you to be part of this conversation. What do you think about that? Do you think you should say something after someone farts or burps? What the hell am I going to say tonight? <laughs> uh, ask what you had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Is that the takeaway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. George, you got, give me something. Give me something. Do, do you think we should just stop saying bless you all together? Or uh, should we have I don't this? care. Okay. 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 I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> you did, but um, it really, it's it's a convention, you know. And I'm I'm getting I'm looking at a lot of situations in my life where people are doing things because they've always done them that yeah. way. Yeah. 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 You know, let me give you an example of this. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, I get statement. I I go online and I look at my bank statement online. It shows me the trans the transactions in reverse order. You know, we've always done it that way. I call up the bank and I say, "Hey, I don't live this way. I don't I don't die before I'm born. I don't buy you know? things backwards. I don't buy things backwards. I don't have to. Do Why are we doing it this way? I don't know. We use the the service for this. Leave me alone. You know, <laughs> it's like." We've always done it Wait, this way. So I just want to know, I can't, I, of all the things you could have brought up from argument of tradition that are actually bad, you brought up bank statements. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I, because I, I had to deal with so this I can verify list. It. That's, that's the top of the list. That's that in its own right. For me, right for me that's the top of the list. All right. All right. <laughs> it's so the we, top of my list. Silly, it's not silly. the top of your list. <laughs> I know I know we were gonna go silly for a little bit. We're gonna go a little bit back more serious. Uh Eric, I'd like to touch a little bit on that free will statement that you made. If we don't have free will, uh how can karma even be justified in anything that's doing? Because clearly it's punishing us for things that we had no con control or volition over. I would argue and I'm, I'm massaging the term free will here, that even if free will did exist, karma in no right has a position of authority over us anyway. It has to be something that's consensual or, or deserving. It can't just be a, I, I'm, okay, free will exists, and I get to decide how to punish you. It's like, I never agreed to this. I don't know who you are. What right are you coming from to punish me for taking an extra cookie? Like, that's not cool. Just let me do what I got to do. <laughs> it has, has to be something you can update, right? Has Persistent. to be something you can update or yeah. have some like feedback on us. It's like, hey, yeah. agree. Can't just be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and Ty, another good quick quick point. Uh, sure, sure. What you said about someone doing something bad and then not having uh, uh, something come at them, and that 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 makes them do that bad behavior more potentially. The yeah. opposite can occur too, where someone could do something really good and then coincidentally something bad happens. So I'm like, well, I'm never doing that again. Or they do something good and nothing happens. <laughs> and there's no like, Oh, I, I thought this was a nice right. thing. It's like, Nope, everything's normal. Yep. Just like, so, Oh, well that kills my motivation and go out of my way to try to do these good things. Yeah. Good. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Dread. Yeah. Well, karma really is, in essence, like believing in Santa is that um, he's watching you. Uh, he knows who's naughty and who's nice. And right. 
you will be uh, rewarded accordingly. You'll either find a lump of coal in your sock or a nice present, a new bike under your under your Christmas tree. Um, I, I again, I think it's just uh, it's an appeal to this uh, universal authority um, that's going to make everything better. And and uh, further to Scott's point, there, this idea that um, you know reincarnation and, and moving up levels. I mean, who's to say that uh, humans are the pinnacle of creation or of, of the universe? Like, is it really the best thing oh, Scott, to be Scott, a human? Scott, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Ah, uh, I got the perfect solution for that one. Oh, I hope it's We're short. in a matrix. That we're in a simulation <laughs> simulated by our future selves. So it's an ancestor simulation. So they say that the karma is a way to move up this little video game. Hmm. Not that I believe that, but I'm just saying that could be an argument someone could produce. Sure, say that we are, it is human centric. Larry, I want to throw something out at you. I'm seeing a lot of par parallels between karma, God beliefs, and even Santa in terms of figuring out like this ambiguous thing. I can't see that determines whether I do good things or bad things as a, as a inhibition for me to do bad things, or at least hopefully a, a carrot stick situation where it's like, if I do good, this ambiguous force that watches all my actions will reward me. And if I do bad, this ambiguous force that watches me <laughs> will make me do or keep me from bad things. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have thoughts on that? Do you think <clears throat> that's a coincidence? Well, I think that if we're working from a hum human um, objective um, and, and for the better, betterment of uh, humanity per se, mm -hmm. all we really need is empathy and compassion. You know, we can we can guard ourselves. We can um, monitor ourselves and do what is right for uh, ourselves and our society uh, simply from you know the golden rule, as it were. What uh, what was it? Confucius used to say, "Don't do unto others what you wouldn't have them do to you." But you want the the best for yourself, and if you if you care about your fellow man, then empathy and compassion would kick in, and you would do the right thing. Uh, however, there we are pulled in many different directions in this life, and sometimes uh, we have to choose priorities. But I don't know; it's a really hard question. Hmm. What are you going to do? Now, I'll throw this out as my last point: if we can right now in this grounded universe actually make a karma system that's that is a human centric model that says listen instead of all this court cases and 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 scheduling appointments with a judge and lawyers and all these fees you got to pay we just made a list of rules we have google glass now and we can just update you on like hey you're doing a bad thing hey that intent mm -hmm. was wrong change it or now that we can see what you're doing all day long we will we will dock your account a certain amount of fees that we've all agreed to as human beings on this planet i would be like you're getting closer to something that i would actually prefer more than this cosmic magic stuff larry you raise your head what's up well aren't you reinventing the ten commandments and that's not morality <laughs> am i reinventing the you know, ten yeah, commandments you just what said we this? need a list of rules and we all have to live by them uh <laughs> morality isn't the list of rules <laughs> i like that that's good that's a good counteract that's true vanilla sky i think was a movie they made about that mm -hmm. yeah you larry you're doing all we're gonna do in the future <laughs> all my fun is gone so much for that. I, had a, I had a zillion well, idea I'll, I'll, ready I'll to throw go. a little bit back into it. Uh, we, could get, <laughs> we could get a little bit back to where you were talking about, you know, a list of rules and then uh, the universe automatically corrects, you know, bad behavior. Uh, we may be getting closer to that than you think with the, as close as we're getting to artificial intelligence. Mm. I mean, and, and some, uh, somebody was saying earlier that uh, if we could have uh, non-humans determine how humans should live, we wouldn't want that. We'd want humans to, to determine that. Mm. Uh, well, humans program machines and program artificial intelligence. We would just have to program the human priority into it and mm. then turn it, turn our, you know, uh, mm. enforcement over to the machine world, as it were, and have them monitor our, our, our conversations, our actions, our are, uh, you know, interactions with people. Basically what they do instead of selling us stuff though, they instead just help us correct our behavior to be nicer to each other. I think yeah, there's some yeah, promise yeah. to that. There might be some you promise. don't want to set a rule, a set of rules about don't do this, do that, but how our interactions should work for the benefit of humanity or, or, or ourselves, that type Mental of thing, make, to make a human humanity uh, 
healthier in the going forward. Not put it that way. Like, is it possible to leverage what people really want to do selfishly into the betterment of all? I like that would it. Would be kind of cool. Yeah, we, you're going to have a narcissist out there who's going to go like that. You know? Larry, we're at the bottom of the show. Uh, you can catch everyone at the links that I'll put in the comment description. And I'm going to put uh, Dubshine's album link in there. Uh, Boudreaux, nice. hey, if we got time, we'll play your music. We'll also link to your uh, the YouTube channel where you put music at. Uh, Dread Pirate, you can find them. Mine, P-Y-R-A-T, uh, Pirate. And uh, we got some cool stuff coming out. You In the future, stay tuned. This is Let's Chat. Feel free to subscribe. Larry, why don't you take us out? We definitely have run out of time. My own content is at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, visit recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, this has been the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The Me? time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody. bye. bye.